Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Today, another interesting matchbox kit. Uh, well, it's one of the later ones, but it's uh, something that's been loaned to us very kindly by our great friend John Bevan. So thanks very much John. Something I've never seen before, so it's always good to get your hands on something different. The Churchill Avre, or Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers, or sometimes they, they say it's Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers. But it's one of these Royal Engineers, uh, very, uh, they, they have the Hobart's Funnies and all these engineering vehicles, mine sweeping, flail tanks. In this case, we're going to be doing some Assault Bridge laying, and this looks really good, I've got to say. Uh, it comes with, it looks like it comes with a diorama. Oh, oh, all my Christmases have come at once! So, it's 76 cal kit of course. Now the date on this one, I've been struggling. I believe it's 89, uh, I'll give or take a year. Um, I can tell that because of the Chinese writing on the back and just the way it's presented. It's the sort of uh, universal product toy company in Macau style. So, uh, I'm gonna show you the back though. It's got a really nice graphics on the back. Obviously they weren't doing any uh, windows that this era, but look at this rather nice uh, image they've got here of it um, showing the the bridge laying equipment and showing it on a diorama. I do hope that's included. So I haven't opened it, it's the first time I've ever seen one of these, it's something I've never even had in my hand before. It's uh, PK177, so it does still have a matchbox um, nomenclature, so you can tell it was the, definitely the, the last of the matchbox, true matchboxes era. And I have a sneaky feeling that this was intended by Matchbox earlier than it was actually produced, so I think we'll call this a proper Matchbox in fairness. Well, straight away, we have got some, some diorama. It's not very big, that's not as big as I thought it was going to be, but let's just get this out and see what we've got. What's on top of it? Okay. So, here we go. The unsuccessful Dieppe raid showed that specialised types of armour were needed to assault fortified open beaches and after evaluation of both the Ram and Sherman, the Churchill was chosen for ad adaptation because of its roomy hull and side escape doors. The Avre Armoured Vehicle Royal Engineers equipped the Royal Engineers assault requirements of the 79th Armoured Division using a number of specialist modifications including recovery, mine clearance and bridge laying, one particular version being used as a carrier stroke launcher for the SBG small box girder assault bridge. Usually mounted on a Mark IV variant of the Churchill tank, the bridges could span 30 feet gaps and enable a 14 foot wide, a 14 foot high wall to be crossed and were originally carried in one single piece but later the folding SBG, small box girder assault bridge, was developed to reduce the height when travelling. These devices were used with great success during the Normandy campaign after D-Day and in the subsequent Northwest European campaign. Very good, great writer, I like that. It's got a Bedford twin 350 horsepower engine, six cylinders, wow. Weight 39 tonnes, <laughs> blimey, it's not light is it? Right, okay. Before we get into the instructions, let's have a look at these decals, which I don't think we're going to be able to have a look at too closely, because obviously they're quite old. And uh, they're also quite small, as they often are on these matchbox kits. So, Churchill Bridge Layer, they're calling it. Yeah. Actually, actually, no, these are in better condition than the other recent matchboxes I've been looking at. That's coming off, I won't take it any further. But that's going to come off really easily. That seems to be nice. That's, that's usable, no problem. So, let us have a look. This is going to be quite an interesting uh, and different sort of uh, vehicle, isn't it? So we've got some instructions here showing the 5th Assault Regiment, the 6th Assault Regiment, or the 42nd Assault Regiment, and showing you all the markings of the stencils and the bridge itself. Small box girder bridge. Um, Mm. Okay, so that's it. So, 
in structure, doesn't they're very small, the images are very small. So you start off actually building your small box girder bridge, which is here, and off we go. So it's got to have these sort of side stanchioned, the hone beam deck, and there's a hone beam spar, forward bank seat. I like the way they put this detail telling you what they are, that's very good. The rear, the rear bank seat, and then you end up very quickly, you end up putting these parts together. Before you know it, you've got a bridge. That's incredible. And this is the uh, the overhead um, sort of archway that enables it to be, they have wires, cables come over that enables it to be suspended and enable them to lift it up and down. Then you've got your tracks, uh, rubber band tracks, which are never the greatest, but they, they go with the territory at this scale, don't they? And then we've got the petard mortar, which it fires. So it's it's, it's, it's weaponized. So it's a mighty, mighty mortar. They, they fired these at buildings and tanks, and it was really powerful. Short range, but very powerful indeed. I don't think they fire in more than a couple of hundred meters, but uh, in close, they did a lot of damage. Then you've got your Churchill uh, turret mortar going in. Various uh, bits of stowage on the side. Waterproof covers, tarpaulins here. And then we've got putting in the many, many running gears for the Churchill tank. Lots of little small wheels. Looks like they're all sadly moulded in one piece, but anyway. Again, goes with the territory of this scale, I suppose. And then you're going to bring in your drive and idler wheels over on this side. Same again on the opposite side, on the starboard side. Then you're going to bring in your tracks. Put them on the other side as well, and then you've got your whoops, and you've got your um, framework gear for the the bridge mounting, uh, holding the bridge gear. Underneath you've got your exhaust system, but actually it runs along the top. I think on this doesn't it? Down, down the side. How does it run? It runs out the back, and then across the the beam. Okay, um, and then we've got our our archway and the whole assembly with that archway on the bridge being clipped to the back of the tank. Sorry, I said it was an exhaust system. It just looks like an exhaust system. It's not. It's a winching system. It's the winch. It spins round, 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 round. It has a cable on it, of course. It does look like the exhaust, doesn't it? I think I can be forgiven for that error. Now it becomes clearer down here. You can see you're going to use some thread, I presume. They don't provide that, do they? No, they don't. So you've got to use some thread around it to make it look more realistic. A bit of cable. Thread that round and then you've got to cable it all up. My goodness, it's like rigging. Oh wow. Well, it looks really good, doesn't it, actually? I like that. I like that a lot. So, so those are the instructions for the Churchill Avre. Looks promising, doesn't it? Let's see what the plastic's like, shall we? First of all, we've got tracks. Um, Ooh, not sure how well they're I'm going to stand up for the test of time or have stood up. Have a look at this. They look a little bit uh, misshapen to me. See that? Yeah, they're quite, they're quite delicate, aren't they? Those delicate here. And what it is, of course, they thread through uh, this section here. Um, but how strong that would be? A bit, bit scary. It looks very weak to me. Um, but the actual tracks, in terms of accuracy, they look rather nice, to be fair. Look at that. They look good, don't they? Wow, okay. Then we have the brown sprue, and this has got the little bit of diorama on it. Um, very, very basic diorama, I have to say. It's not got huge features on it. But there is some mud and there's some tracks. It's like a little hill. And it's obviously got a, like a stream or a ford they're going to try and put the bridge across, I guess. Um, you can see there's like a broken girder of what, where a bridge has probably been blown up. But that's nice, you know, and we talk about this on it a lot um, in terms of the dioramas. It just adds something, doesn't it? I mean, what does it cost to produce a, you know, that piece of plastic there? Yes, I mean, even the design that's gone into that is very minimal, isn't it? It's very simple. And yet it's worth having. It's, it's just adding a little something. You can 
put different colours on it, you can put a pool of water in the in the shell hole, the depression. It brings a bit of animation to the kit and that's what we're missing today I'm afraid. Anyway, I won't half on about it. People know my views. And I know of you many of you agree with me too. Anyway, so here we've got the sides and this is now this does look like classic matchbox rather than Revel, doesn't it? There's no flash. Look at those little wheels. Now that's got all the potential to be a flash city and there's none at all. That's lovely. It's stunning. Look at those. That's nice. There's your petard mortar here. That goes in the turret. Here's your sort of A-frame, uh, sort of arch frame, overhead frame for the rigging. And then you've got some parts, those parts of the bridge here that uh, form the base. Get some focus, thank you. Yes, every every admires my camera, and the only one thing it's a bit sluggish at is focusing sometimes. <laughs> Can be a little bit uh, slow on the uptake. Once it does get there, it's good. Yeah, so there we go. So there's your uh, some of the detail on your diorama, which looks quite nice. You can see where the bridge has been blown up. So they're going to have to fix that. Second one. This time we have a very pale coloured sprue. And this is all the bridge. All these parts of bridge. Now it says here, made in England. So you can tell this is, well, I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure that's actually true. Uh, because the actual um, typeface is different than the actual made in England ones. I have to say, I'm not convinced this was actually stamped out in the UK. I'm sure the tool was made in England. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. So here you've got all this lovely uh, running area where the, uh, uh, rather, so it's underneath the running area I should say. That's the side that the vehicles will walk, will walk across or drive across. Um, and then you've got all this lovely support work. Again, look at the lack of flash here, isn't it lovely? Look at the detail here. See all the bolts, yeah. All the, all the individual little pieces like, they're like planks of wood, aren't they, basically. Uh, steel and wood and you've got no flash no problems here whatsoever and then finally we have got the green this is the tank now so it's the tank in its body so this is the Churchill itself Churchill's quite a long slim narrow tank relatively speaking and here we've got the sort of side pontoons and uh, the, uh, the guards over the top of the tracks here. Same on the other side, identical. And then you've got your turret. And then we've got all the drive sprockets, whoops, drive sprockets here. Um, various little parts here like the, uh, the tarpaulin rain covers here. Very, very nice, isn't it? And then you've got your, um, the top here, the main, main deck of the, uh, the tank. Hmm, it really does, um, it's got quite a fair bit of detail there. You can see it's got the engine deck where it's got hatches, access hatches. It's nice, isn't it? Well, I have to say, I think that this is, I think it was conceived by Matchbox, not Revell. I'm sure of that. I think this is one of these, just at the time they were going bust, it was probably being designed actually. Um, but it's really nice and it's Free of flash, there's actually just a bit on the turret, there's a tiny, tiny hint of flash. That's the only bit I've seen, just at the base of the turret. Let's see if you can spot it with the big zoom lens. Um, just a hint of it here. See that? There, uh, you see it better with my finger behind, can't you? But apart from that, it's pretty much flash free. So, I have to say that I am mighty impressed with that one, to be honest. Um, 
don't think the box is overly inspiring, and that's a design problem really. Um, uh, nothing wrong with the artwork, but they have this hockey stick style, which I've never liked. So, I might just give it half a point off for that. But apart from that, I think it's beautiful. It's got a diorama, the parts are nicely moulded. You know, all that bridge um, uh, cross hatching and uh, lattice work could be a nightmare if it was covered in flash. You'd be there for weeks trying to clean it up. There's no problem here, there isn't any flash. So, don't need to worry about that. I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10, I think that's fair. So the box is a bit un uninspiring because it's the latest style. I mean, they are silly, aren't they? It's like a big blank area, Pff, not very nice design. But apart from that, I think the actual contents of the box are fantastic. 9.5 out of 10 for me. I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10. And don't forget to smash the like button. And uh, those of you that are not subscribed already, please do so. Cost you nothing, and you'll get to know about any more similar reviews and uh, interesting talks sometimes on historic subjects as well, and even some aviation appears from time to time, some real aviation. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, ding the notification bell, even if you have subscribed, and I can promise you there will be more interesting Matchbox items and others coming very soon. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks a lot and bye for now.